Hi there, I'm Dr. Chris, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the basic definitions for hydrocarbon traps. While you're watching, I'd like you to keep in mind the story behind the structures which make up hydrocarbon traps. It is this story, say, about depositional and deformational history, which dictate whether a trap contains hydrocarbons or nothing at all. Here we go. Once again, there are five features required for hydrocarbons to be found. We need a source rock, a migration path, a reservoir and cap rock, and a trapping mechanism. Our look at basic definitions of traps starts with a simple structural anticlinal trap. This single anticlinal system has all the features needed for hydrocarbons to be found. For basic reference, a typical system would be on the scale of meters to tens of meters depending on location. We will focus on the reservoir and trap, which is an unfractured and unfaulted anticline. We start off by identifying the highest point of the trap, which is called the culmination or the crest. The lowest point is called the spill point and is associated horizontal spill plane. A trap won't necessarily be filled to this point. The closure is the distance between the crest and the spill plane. In a reservoir with oil or gas, we are interested in the pay. In this case, from the crest to the oil water contact. This is the gross pay as compared to a situation where there is a facies change within the reservoir. We will end up with a net pay, which represents only the producible oil due to the facies change. Also, beneath the hydrocarbons is a zone of bottom water, with the edge water, strangely enough, at the edge of the hydrocarbons. If you recall, there are several factors which control whether a trap contains oil, gas, a combination of the two, or nothing at all. These factors include conditions of deposition, history of the source rock, depth of burial, pressure, age, and overall history. These are things you need to think about when assessing hydrocarbon traps. In the case of an oil-saturated trap, the contact between oil-saturated rock and water-saturated rock is called the oil-water contact, OWC, which is the deepest point of producible oil. A good question would be, why is there only oil in this trap? In the case of a gas-saturated rock, the gas water contact, GWC, represents the contact between gas saturated rock and water saturated rock at its deepest producible level. Again, the question would be, why is there only gas in this trap? Finally, gas saturated, oil saturated, and water saturated rock are present. We now have two contacts, one being the oil water contact and the gas oil contact. In this case, the gas in the trap is called the gas cap. Again, why would we have a combination of oil and gas in this trap? Another consideration is the contact between the oil, gas, and water, which may be sharp, which indicates high permeability. Or, the contacts may be gradational, which is an indication of low permeability and high capillary pressure. And finally, not all fluid contacts are horizontal. In this case, the OWC is tilted due to hydrodynamic flow of the water bottom. I must admit, prior to me researching for this video, I didn't know this even existed. If you have some examples of places where this exists, please write about them in the comments section. I'd be glad to hear about them. We are going to have a look at a couple simple examples of traps, and I want you to have a think about what factors would make the traps contain hydrocarbons, and what factors would make the traps not contain hydrocarbons. The images are available down below in my notes, so feel free to download them if you like. Here's a quick multiple trap example to help you think about depth and hydrocarbons. The more shallow the trap, the higher the likelihood of oil. Similarly, the deeper the trap, the higher likelihood of gas. We return to our anticline trap to look at some considerations and exercises. After adding some faults, begin by identifying possible crests, spill points, and closures, as well as possible assets and hindrances for hydrocarbon accumulation. Perhaps there is an unconformity to change perspective on crests, spill points, and closures. Here's a system with two anticlines. Again, identify key parts of the traps. Also, under what conditions would hydrocarbons accumulate? Suppose there is thrust faulting in the area. How would the faults change the situation? And in a normal fault situation, crest, closure, spill points, net and gross pay may be quite mixed up. 
Or how about some tilting and an unconformity? There are many possibilities to consider when identifying parts of traps. To recap, there are several basic features of hydrocarbon traps that you need to know. You need to remember the highest point, or the crest, the lowest point where hydrocarbons can escape, called the spill point, the horizontal plane through the spill point, called the spill plane, the closure between the crest and the spill plane, the gross pay between the crest and the water contact, as long as there are hydrocarbons, of course. I've provided a link to my notes down below if you'd like to click on them and use them. If you like my video, please give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and even better, share my videos in your networks. Till next time, I'm Dr. Chris, and keep rocking.